This is the Authentic Sex Podcast, real-life conversations about sex, pleasure, and relationships. I'm your host, Juliet Allen. Welcome to another episode of the Authentic Sex Podcast. This is a really, really juicy conversation with my friend, Alira. We go into marriage, how to keep the fire alive between two people in a long-term relationship. We talk about parenting, co-sleeping, breast explants. Now, this is a really interesting one and something that I didn't know about Alira, that she had her implants taken out and how that impacted her. Um, And I'm so grateful that she shared about that. We also talk about body confidence, and this is something that I really admire about Alira is that she's so confident in her body, and it has changed so much over the years, and um, I just really wanted to learn from her and understand and explore how she feels so confident in her body as a woman. So we go there. We also talk about BJs because, you know, why not? It's um, the Authentic Sex Podcast and I just can't go an, a season without talking about blowjobs. Um, and we talk about much more. So yeah, really looking forward to bringing this episode to you today. But before we go into it, I just wanted to announce that the Doors to Pleasure School and the Intimacy Blueprint, which are my two signature programs, are officially open. Now, the Doors to Pleasure School only open two to three times a year. Intimacy Blueprint is the same. What I have decided to do is double up, open them both, and give you an opportunity to join them both together for a really, really big discounted bundle price. So if you are keen and curious to explore more about sexuality, sex, pleasure, intimacy, relationships, all the things in a very holistic way, I recommend jumping on over to my website, which is juliet-allen.com and signing up, registering, you know, committing to yourself and your learning in this area of your life. I'm really looking forward to welcoming new people into our courses over the next couple of weeks. Uh, And I will leave it at that. You enjoy this episode of Authentic Sex. Thank you for your support and your love with the launch of season eight. And have a wonderful day. This episode of Authentic Sex is sponsored by the Juliet Pleasure Wand. The Juliet is a premium crystal pleasure wand designed to heighten your sexual energy increase self-love and self-pleasure, expand your orgasmic experiences and connect you to your true sexual essence. You can read more and purchase your own crystal wand by visiting my website www.juliet-allen.com. Alira, welcome to Authentic Sex. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thanks, babe. Oh my gosh, this has been a long time coming. I know. Who would have thought, hey? (laughs) I remember when we first kind of started chatting because we really are, Mm. we met online. It's an online love love story. (laughs) Um, And we're just as bad as each other, right? We literally talk and talk and talk. Yep. Yep. So this could go for a while, but we'll try and keep it to an hour. Mm. That's my goal. Um, But yeah, I remember when we started chatting and I thought, this woman's got some juice the conversations are juicy. We really need to record a podcast episode together, which is why you're here today, because I appreciate your authenticity and um, just your realness. And I, I guess we kind of had the same sense of humor and <laughs> frankness about life and motherhood and all the things. So thanks for saying yes, babe. Thank you. My gosh. I feel like when I met you, I I said to you even, I feel like I've known you for so many years (laughs) and we just have so many similarities and Mm. it's just like, oh, it's just warming. I love it. Yeah, we do have a lot of similarities, some that we won't even talk about on the podcast episode today, but that, yeah, 
some funny ones there. <laughs> some dark the horses there. <laughs> some dark horses there from the past. Um, so, um, you tell me a bit about you. Actually, I just mm. want to intro um, this episode. So, for anyone listening, so if you're listening, we plan on talking about um, marriage, Alira's marriage, potentially my relationship. Who knows what's going to come up? How do we keep relationships alive and passionate and all the things and sex lives alive? We mm. definitely want to talk about body confidence um, in this episode. Um, Alira, I feel like you're going to have a lot to say about it and share and inspire other women in particular. Um, mm. So we're going to go there potentially a little bit about leadership and business and life and all the things who knows I've got BJ's here and then two question marks in my notes so let's see um let's just see where it takes us tell tell everyone a bit about you like where are you living what are you doing blah 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 yeah so I am now residing in Tasmania I was born and raised in Wollongong and then lived up on the north coast in beautiful little Cabarita, which is just south of Coolangatta. And I have had a very colourful life. Um, I grew up in a very blue-collared family. My um, parents were very hard workers and I sort of learned from a very young age that you've got to go after things. And that's sort of, I guess, I was trying to think of this when – you know, you were asking me like, oh, just share who you are. Like, where did I begin? Mm. And I went, I left school in year eight. Um, I hated mm. high school and mm. I went working straight into medical. And I was a medical administrator, medical practitioner, uh, practice manager for, gosh, I think 15 years. Mm. And on the side of that, I was also a model. And this is mm. where this body confidence topic is going to really come into play here because I was a men's magazine model for things like FHM and Zoo and oh, wow. work here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually wrote a sex column, which is, oh! which is so well, funny. You told me that. You did tell me that. Yeah. Oh, which so magazine was it? The Zoo magazine. Oh. <laughs> <I love laughs> so it. it was very like a little bit smutty. Yeah. Um, but – in saying that, like, that's where I developed this hard exterior, this really mm. deep confidence within myself. Mm. Um, so fast forward many, many, many years, modeling, working in medical. Um, I had my first baby at the age of 20. I was married mm. at the age of 21. I then was traveling the world with my ex-husband, well, who was my husband at the time. He was a football player. And it just sort of like, you know, we were just doing our thing and then we fell apart. So this is where we can touch on the marriage thing as well. I'm also co-parenting. Uh, mm. We're also a blended family. I've been through divorce and separation at a very young age. And now I reside in Tasmania with my family and my beautiful husband, Shane, who I have another two babies to. Mm. And I work in an online space mentoring women in their online beauty business. Mm. So yeah, it's a bit of jack of all trades, really. Like there's so many feathers in my cap that it's really hard to just articulate it and put it into one little sock. Yeah. Um, but there's just a lot there. That's what makes you so rich. And that's what makes, yeah. I think, women who, people who've experienced so much in life and all the ups and the downs, I think, are just mm. so interesting because you've got so many stories <sighs> to tell so and many so much. Stories. Yeah, and you just learn, we learn so much, right, from all those mm. um, hardships like divorce and co-parenting oh. and becoming a mum young. Like we have very similar yeah. stories there actually because yeah, our, it, our eldest, are, they're about the same age, right? How old they are? They are 16. The dry is 16. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Millie's 17. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so let's go into marriage. Let's talk mm. specifically about you and Shane, your husband, who you yeah. have um, your youngest two to. Yeah. Um, My dream boat. <laughs> yeah, your dream boat. Like, okay, let's let's be honest. On social media, it all looks really dreamy. But mm. as a friend, I do know that mm. you what you've shared, it actually is a pretty – awesome relationship yeah and you have a lot of love for him and him for mm. you and um I know that you guys have sex that's for sure because um <laughs> any friend of mine um I I do know some of the ins and outs of their sex life yeah. not everything but you've shared that it's 
great and that's yeah. awesome. How do you, why do you think that is? Why do you think this mm. relationship works? You know, our relationship initially started, so Shane was in the military and I was currently living at home with my parents and then he got deployed and we had to create a friendship over WhatsApp because he was deployed, we couldn't see each other. We created this really beautiful exploration of each other through words and we couldn't FaceTime, we couldn't nothing. Where he was was so remote that we had no option but to use dialect. And I honestly, I always say that creating that really solid, beautiful foundation, but also the cheekiness in our relationship of sexting and, you know, sending all that really spicy, beautiful stuff and creating a storyboard through that. I honestly believe that we become friends before lovers Mm. and that has really sustained us. We have had some really turbulent times over the last couple of years, which I've divulged to you and you know, I don't shy away from that on social media either because I know there's such potency and power in sharing, you know, that, yes, we are deeply connected, but, my gosh, we've been through it. Mm. So it's just like I was even saying to him this morning, you know, we've been married, what is it, nearly five years. We've been together for nine. And oh, just the fire I feel in my belly to mm. just be intimate with him and love him and adorn him and – him adorn me it's just oh my gosh it's just so yum yeah was it like that from the beginning like when you first met was there fireworks like was there sexual chemistry Mm, straight away there was so we had a date uh we met each other for a day Mm. and (laughs) there's a running joke story that we always tell but you know, it was very hot and spicy and he was a little bit like uh, trepidation because he was like, I don't want to ruin this because she's such a cool chick. Mm. And I remember saying to him like, hey, you know, we're kissing on the couch. And I was like, oh, this is just doing my head. And I'm like, you just get, hurry up and just fuck me. I'm like, just <laughs> hurry up and just do me. Like you're getting deployed <laughs> for seven months. Like I can't not do this. Yeah. And it's this running joke because he's just like, She was just so on it. I've never met a woman that was just so confident in knowing Mm. what she wanted. And Mm. in that moment, I was like, I wanted him. But our relationship has evolved in such a way that there is still such spice and fire, but it's deeper. You know, Mm. we've got babies, bodies have changed, like shit's happened and Mm. our rivers and our connection and just our rope of being connected together is just really like fibered deeper together now. Mm. Um, did and you fuck se- on, on our, that and day? Our sex is ch- yeah, of course we did. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was not going to. He was getting deployed and I was like, this guy is so hot. Like, oh, my yeah. gosh. And we laughed because it had been such a long time since I had been intimate with anyone mm. that I was literally just like a spider monkey crawling in this bed because <laughs> I just couldn't get out of there quick enough because it was just something I'd never experienced, the – intimacy and connection was just like mind-blowing to me Mm. and yeah it's just like oh my gosh wow Mm. so that's interesting because I was just thinking I thought maybe he didn't I thought maybe he turned around and said no not yet which is what happened to me with Nick it was the (laughs) absolute opposite of any scenario we got we met and then on our first date I was like fuck yeah let's go and he just like (laughs) like he didn't he just energetically we kissed, but he didn't give the sign that he was going to fuck me. And I was like, mm. what the fuck's going on? Like, get your yeah, no. clothes off, get it in. <laughs> and then second date, no, he didn't. And I was like, what's going on? And then third date, we did. But I think yeah. he was just really like trying to mm. be respectful in a way. I wonder which if I wasn't he had used more to. time. I think if he was being deployed, off. I wouldn't have even like, <laughs> no, nah, he would have got it. Got it in, got it in, but got it done. It just, yeah. you know, and it's there's this funny bit that we tell because I ha- currently had no car as well. Mm. I was borrowing my parents' car and I was like, oh, look, I've got to go because my dad drives the street sweeper and he's going to see his car parked out the front of the hotel at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this, like, childhood funny story that we just yeah. laugh about. But, you know, it really – We've always had great sex. Yeah. We've always been very like in tune and we know what we want. Mm. But 
I can also testify that that always hasn't been the case either when we were going through really challenging things, trying to navigate to come back to that when you have, I guess, a a standard benchmark of where you know it can be. Mm. And when you know there is disconnect, when life is happening and shit happens and especially Mm. being a female, like I've recognised that your yoni just closes with stress. Like it just shuts Mm. down. So Mm. having that awareness in our relationship on Mm. where we're both at has just been beautiful. Yeah. So over the nine years, what, when, when have been the times where you felt like less sex and potentially Ooh. had less sex in the relationship? Um, um, and you know, the, the funny thing is it's not even after post babies, um, mm. when like bodies changes. So Shane has had really, um, deep health complexities leaving the military mm. and it's when those mental health complexities have come into play. Yeah. Um, holding your spouse through a really challenging time Mm. you know you you lose a part of yourself doing that so Mm. I just didn't feel sexually connected not that I wasn't sexually connected to him I just physically just couldn't feel it and he wasn't Mm. either you know so we Mm. both were on this symbiotic relationship with one another Mm. and that's where we could identify when the stress was really high and there was a lot of external factors coming in but there was still intimacy, but just not penetration, you yeah. know, like, and that's where we learned that there was so much more to just intimacy than actually getting it in. Yeah. Yeah. And there is, mm. and I, well, I can definitely relate to that because yeah. we're in a phase and have been for a while where we don't mm. have near as much sex as we used to, yeah. but we are in a phase, but when we do, it's just, we were talking about it yesterday in the car. It's just so good. It's mm-hmm. so fucking – it's not even good. It's just, like, mind-blowing. Magnetic, yeah. Yeah, it is. And But then we do ha- – we, mm. um, we are intimate in other ways. Like, we have sexual intimacy, but we're not, like – it's not, like, penis in vagina, you know? Yeah. It's, like, different thing, different mm-hmm. ways of connecting. And yeah. that, that keeps the fire stoked, I guess mm-hmm. you could say. It just keeps yeah. it ablaze, even if it's just, like, a few hot coals. They're always there. There's Never always can. an ember, you know, and you can chuck a bit of kindling on it. And <laughs> it's so, you know, funny. Moving to Tasmania, I've seen so much of my life through the seasons and the mm. things that you have to do here to for survivability mm. that the fire's never really out. You just got to stoke it and you've got to mm. set the right condition and get the right wood. You can't have wet wood. It's got to be super dry. Like it's just yeah. all these things that I can see in life mm. through living. Mm. And it's just, yeah, it's just, you know, and look, I love having sex in front of our fire, (laughs) by the way, in Tassie. It's just, there's so many beautiful things here where you can just drop in and we, you know, move to a really quiet part of Tasmania and we're separated from a lot of things and people, but it has been the best thing we've ever done for our marriage and our our own self Mm. because we've just come back even deeper it's like we've yeah. we've re-met again and I say this and I think I've said this to you like I feel like you need to re-meet your partner every five years mm. you can't mm. be with the same person that you married no you can't um, kids life things happen you have mm. to learn to re-love and re-meet every five years yeah yeah, yeah. and wake up I I always remind myself to wake up each day and this Mm. does not happen each day I'm not even going to pretend that this happens but I remind Mm. myself to aim to wake up with curiosity about who this man is rather than Mm -hmm. take for granted like oh I know him this is what he does this is what he's about Mm. it's like no we we can change overnight and yeah the more that we um how do I say it like the less interest we have in getting to know our partner day after day after day, mm. the fire kind of just dulls and dies. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah. Like we're currently co-sleeping as well with our three-year-old. To hear. Yeah. And I've never co-slept. My other two mm-hmm. babies, I was, you know, very regimented, which I yeah. now, you know, have the awareness around, oh my gosh. Like, yeah. you know, I was only doing with the tools that I had. Of and course. now – our youngest sleeps between us. So we miss that mm. intimate connection. And we we're laughing last night because I was just like, oh, I feel like the closest spoon I get is putting my toe on your toe. Oh my gosh, at the end, totally at the end of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> But then this morning, I just like, 
you know, curled over and he was just like, my gosh, like just to feel your body on me. Mm. I've missed this. And yeah. that's the bit that you can miss in parenting. You can yeah. miss that bit of touch and connection. And mm. for us, if we ever have an argument coming back and being connected sexually is the bit that just brings us back. Mm. It's always that bit, you know, it's the bit that just mm, just brings it back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's mm. the same with us. It takes us a bit because Nick's um pa- Nick's kind of pattern is to he's avoidant avoidant. So he will like retract before he comes mm. in. So I know that about him. I know he needs a bit of space before we yep. do the makeup sex. Yep. Whereas I would be like, "Cool, so we've sorted it out. Let's fuck." But he <laughs> he needs that space. Yep. Um with the co-sleeping, mm. we're also co-sleeping with our youngest. Our son, he um, he slept between us. Mm. So when Magnolia was born, I was like, okay, I don't want to do that again, but I do want to co-sleep. So she sleeps next to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we still get that bit of cuddling. But then mm. last night, you know, we got into bed. I thought she was like sound asleep. Nick comes in for the spoon, you know, the like the, the sexy bum touch, the like, yeah. the, like, hey. How you doing? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? And then she's like, <laughs> and I was like, well, that, there goes that, there goes that. I was like, night, babe. I like he rolls over, goes to sleep. I sit up, <laughs> breastfeed, you know. How? <laughs> Shane says that too. Like, you know, we laugh because I'm like, you need to look at the small tyrant in between us that is cock blocking you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So how do you, like, where do you have sex? In front of the fire? One. Ooh, it's sort of like wherever, really. Um, I was always like a bed-bound person with sex. Now yeah. I'm like, it's just wherever. Um, yeah. And it's mainly at night because our kids are down. Like, yeah. you know, we can't have toddlers There's no just morning sex in. for to- toddlers. No, no. Um, so it's sort of like, yeah, just that beautiful intimacy next to the fire or on the couch. Um, it just Do you have sex with happens. your kids next to you when they're young or not? I know that's yeah. a really – Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we've certainly. only just started doing that. Yeah. Um, only because I'm like, well, if we don't take this opportunity, mm. then we're not going to have sex, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm not a person where I – I don't want my sex planned in my calendar. No you know, fucking like, way. I have girlfriends that are like, we fuck on Tuesdays and Fridays at no. 4 p.m. And I'm like, I can't. Like, for me, it's very innately intuitive. It's how I feel. Like, Shane mm-hmm. knows when I'm ovulating because I'm just like, oh, hail all you. All like, over it. Yeah. my God, like, I'm drooling and salivating if he's chopping wood or anything. And then <laughs> when I'm coming into my bleed, I'm just like, get away from me. Yeah. Like, you know, it's. Um, I have to take these moments of opportunity when I have them. Mm. And sometimes it's like having Sonny next to us, I'll just like push him up en- enough over onto the side of the bed. Yeah. And, but he's out to it, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, yeah, I just I, I feel so innately comfortable with that. Yeah. I know some people are like, oh, wow. but oh, Some us, people it's... would be like, what the fuck right now? But I speak about this all the time. Yeah. I just think it's so natural. And our yeah. kids spend like 10 months in our tummy yeah. when we're having sex. They're inside yeah. us yes. absorbing it all, all the good yes. juicy vibes. And then suddenly a baby's born and lots of couples are like, oh, we can't, we can't, can't do, it. do it. It's like, well, you can. They're asleep. And mm-hmm. what, what is the harm in them hearing the sounds of I know. lovemaking? Like, really? What is the harm in that? Obviously, they get to an age where they're like, what the fuck, mum? You know, like, what's well, going yeah. on? You but know, having a 16-year-old, we had yeah. to really change the way we were intimate (laughs) and it drove me crazy because I'm a very vocal person I love to be expressive in that moment and having to not be expressive I was denying myself a part of myself doing that and you know but then I also need to be respectful that we have a 16 year old in the house and he doesn't really want to be seeing his mum getting railed by stepdad (laughs) So it's like, you know, you've got to yeah. think of all these of things. Of course, you have to be mindful. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, do. so it's really, um, there's a lot to think when there's kids in the mix. Yeah, there is. Absolutely. Yeah. So actually, no, 
when when you feel like things are going a bit like ah, disconnection, like a bit mm. disconnected from Shane, is there anything you do? Like, do you notice it and then go, okay, like we really need a date or okay, he needs a massage. I don't know. I don't know what you yeah. do. Well, you know, being here in Tassie, we have no family support. So we don't mm. get to go out on date days or, mm. you know, date nights solo together. So we've mm. had to really adapt to recognize that we have to find those moments. And yeah. for me, it's not necessarily doing something. I'm a big communicator. I'm like, hey, I actually feel really disconnected from you. Mm. And he'll be like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just not <laughs> feeling connected. Yeah. Oh, then I'll I'm only him. laughing because this is this is exactly <laughs> us. Like Nick, <laughs> Nick's really surprised and I'm like, yes, yes babe. And he's what like, I was just thinking of like a pink drink bottle or something. And I'm like, well, I'm <laughs> feeling really disconnected. Okay. like So once we open up that communication, we mm. always come back to, um, you know, our love languages and, you know, mm. what someone needs. He's touch our max of service mm. and we just reel it in, you know, we, yeah. we make sure that we're not on our phones as much. We're really mm. conscious. We sit down and we read together. We touch, mm. we just connect and yeah. it's not really doing something. It's just having that awareness around, okay, like we probably just need to peel it back a little bit or we need to peel back life and do more of us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We, uh, we have a new rule in our ha- house from a therapy session a couple of months ago that we did. We do like a couples therapy session every month. Mm. And in a session two months ago, um, we were speaking about quality time and how I felt disconnected, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And our new rule is, and Nick suggested this, was 8.30 phones away. And when he said 8.30, I was like, no, 6 p.m. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> well, no, like I'm saying 8.30 because – we're usually up till about 10, 10.30. I don't know. Yeah. At the moment, maybe a bit earlier because I'm super tired because of baby waking. But mm. um, he was like, well, a lot of the time, you know, one of us like will still be putting one of the kids to sleep and then the other one perhaps is like cooking dinner but also finishing off mm. an Instagram post or doing work stuff. Let's yeah. be honest, like that is a bit of a snippet of time where we get that chance to like do any work last minute things because mm-hmm. we don't devote heaps of time. <laughs> to work because we're always with the kids one of us is yep. always with the kids it's but he's hard. like by 8 30 let's just put it in the kitchen he's like if you need it on for our eldest obviously i always have the phone on because she's out about fucking partying and <laughs> driving and <laughs> causing a lot of worry in my life um he's like we keep it on but we don't need it right next to us so that we occasionally just pick it up out of habit and so that's our new thing and that's really working Ooh. it's kind of like yeah just taking it out of the space even. Mm -hmm. And Um. I've seen a thing the other week and I think I maybe sent it to you and it was there's always time and opportunity. However, when we have devices, we -hmm. feel like we don't have time and opportunity. Mm -hmm. So instead of sitting down on the couch and being on your phone and being non-social and Mm -hmm. you're not connecting, put your phones away, you know, like really deeply be conscious and it's hard to break that pattern when you've been doing it for so long but it takes real strength to do it but when you start Mm. doing it Mm. oh my gosh like you recognize wow there actually is so much time of the day (laughs) yeah there is and you know this I was saying this in a QA and a recently someone said oh what how do I fit in my relationship like our lives are so busy you know we've got kids we've got work and I'm like Mm-hmm. priorities mate priorities mm-hmm. like what are you yeah. priori- what are you prioritizing over quality time with your partner it's yeah. not you're not too busy to have quality time with your partner you need to something needs to go or mm-hmm. the the some, it just needs to change because yeah. you do have time you're probably spending you know who knows what what we're all spending our time on but we're prioritizing yeah. it in other ways so 100 percent. and i look at my parents they've been married for what 43 years wow. and are they, they happily are... married though oh, like <laughs> you know, some people have been married that honestly, long and they sleep in separate rooms no like they are like just in each other like they're just mm. little bubbles they still my parents are still having sex and mm. they're still so intimate and my dad adores my mum and my mum is just obsessed with my dad and Mm. you know I look at them and think wow like they yes they are the generation where they don't really understand tech but they're Mm. still so connected 
Yeah. And I'm like, if I can take a bit of what you guys do and apply that into my marriage, I'll be okay. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah. so great. It's just that you've so had that. beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. And so um, rare these days yeah. for people to have role models of like parents who've been together that long and who are happily married for that long. Yeah. Who you look up to. It's <laughs> like a door. You know, my parents mm. are my best friends and watching them go through, I learned so much about marriage, watching mm. them go through their own traverses, mm. but how they bounce back and always come back to one another. Yeah. You know, like even as much as they wanted to turn their backs and fight each other, they always turn back and turn their hearts. Mm. And I love that. Like yeah, I, I love, love that. that they can just do that. Yeah. And that's what we want to be, right, for our kids. Is mm. well that's that's my goal. Is like it it could be easy for Nick and I to let the disconnection like kind of get greater and greater mm. and greater. But I'm just yeah. so devoted to like not just for us, but for our children mm-hmm. to grow up in a household where they see their parents being intimate with each other and yeah. prioritizing each other and mm-hmm. you know kissing and cuddling and talking and yep. all those things like I want that for them but I know mm-hmm. that if we don't provide that for them as an energy for them to grow up in mm-hmm. in the household then they've got far less of op- like far less of an opportunity to experience mm-hmm. it when they're adults massively and you know we have this saying in our house especially when there's an argument or there is a disconnect and something happens and there's a flashpoint it's not the argument it's how you come back from it Mm. and especially if we have something happen in front of our kids or Mm. you know there's been a stressful moment and we both snap at each other or it's not how you fight it's how you come back from it and showing our kids that mum and dad can disagree And we can both not enjoy each other's company sometimes, Mm. but coming back from that and loving each other and showing them how to repair that has been so paramount in showing healthy modelling of relationships because you are going to fight. You are going to have disconnecting Mm -hmm. moments. You are going to feel the tension. Yeah, Showing your kids how you rebound from that is far more important. Agreed. Agreed. Mm. I have to interrupt this episode to let you know that today is sponsored by Pleasure School. Pleasure School is a monthly membership where together we study intimacy, conscious connections and how to embody our true sexual essence. Every month, students of Pleasure School access members-only educational content across a wide range of formats, including written, audio, video and guided home study. Pleasure School is led by myself, and I'm also joined by other teachers who are pioneering in the fields of sexuality, relationships, and holistic health. This is your chance to join a unique online school like no other in the world. Learn more and join Pleasure School at www.juliet-allen.com. That's J-U-L-I-E-T-A-L-L-E-N. Com. I actually just before we go on to the next topic, I want to say that I know people list there will be people listening who are single parents, mm. um, but or who, um, yeah, parents who are have come from divorce who are now co parenting, which we have both done, yeah. Um, but what I, I think as a child who was at 14, my parents divorced, and it was pretty mm. out of the blue and sudden, and kind of fucked me up for a while basically um Mm. a couple of years after that happened my mum met my stepdad and married him and has been happily married ever since and then my dad met my stepmom and so both my parents even though they divorced and my parents split up Mm. and it was hard they then met you know these beautiful step parents of mine and i've ha- been i've had that beautiful transmission of my parents being in healthy relationships so i mm. think for people listening who are like fuck like i'm single now and the kids are going back and forth there's still there's always still hope. hope that you mm-hmm. will get into a new relationship and that they will finally see you happy mm-hmm. and loved and safe and secure and all the things so yeah i think and of course, our first relationship, the most 
the, the, the priority needs to be with ourselves, right? Like just having oh that love gosh. for ourselves. That's more important than anything. Yeah, so. and it's funny, you know, like I was saying this to Shane a couple of days ago, reflecting on my first marriage, being so young and the effects that that has on a child when you separate. Mm. But then also showing Jai, our elders, that dad and I weren't a good fit, you know, mm. and now we are the bestest of friends not being married. Yeah. And showing a healthy modeling of relationship in my current marriage now mm. Mm. that it's just like there's so much to be taught and seen through mm-hmm. separation if we allow it. You know, mm. it took us nearly eight years to be friends. Mm. But I'm so grateful that we went through those because we wouldn't be where we are today. We couldn't yeah. be best friends in our marriage, in our co parenting. And yeah, there's a lot there. Yeah, there is. That's there is a whole hope. other episode, right? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about body confidence. So mm. you used to be a model. So yes. obviously you, you're a mega babe like now. <laughs> I've seen photos from back then, mega babe back then. Um, I would say even more of a babe now because you've got so much wisdom, you know, and life mm. experience and that's so attractive. I find that so attractive in women. Mm. Like you can have a hot young woman but like a, a, same with guys. You can have a yeah. really hot young guy as you know, you mm-hmm. know, but then it's like, well, you're not really <laughs> I only much go so take. far. I only go so far. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, tell me about like your relationship with your body because it's changed mm. and, you know, you've been through yeah. three pregnancies all the things we know as mothers, mm. how that can change our body is something that I'm very like much in still. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's been a, a bit of a wild journey. Um, I guess for me, like my really strong confidence comes through my relationship with the self because mm. I couldn't allow or rely on others to, you know, I was in a modeling era where I was big boobs, big booty, small waist, size 10 to 12, and I was deemed overweight. You know, I was oh my told God. constant castings, go lose, you know, a few kilos and come back mm. and was denied jobs constantly because I was curvy. Mm. So I learned at a really early stage on in my career that I had to love myself first and foremost, mm. and I couldn't allow other people's perception of what they are seeing to determine how I feel in my own body Mm. and I've always just felt so confident because of the communication I've had with myself you know Mm. like Mm. I used to have comments at school you know oh you think you're so hot or you know you think you're just this and that but it's because I was just so sure of myself that I knew my value and Mm. I knew who I was as a young woman and now a woman Mm. that even still to this day, I get women in my inbox being like, you're just so confident. Like, what do you do? And it's, it literally comes back to self-love practices. Mm. It comes back to this deep sexual connection with the self. Yeah. Um, I truly believe you can't love others without loving yourself first. Yeah. Exploration of your own body, your own sensuality, your own sexuality. It is just this encompass, like, It's just everything, you know, like having this deep attuned communication and feedback, knowing that other people's opinions will not shape how I feel in my body yeah, um, has been really something that's kept me steadfast over so many years. Mm. And Mm. I know that that's not everyone's story. It's not a really, it's not an easy thing to teach. It's not an easy thing to cultivate either. Um. And I still feel as time goes on, I'm always learning and loving myself even more. Mm. Um, I've had three babies, one at a very young age where I bounced back into size eight, Tony Bianco jeans, right? Tony Tony Bianco jeans. (laughs) (laughs) I bounced back into like size six Tony Bianco jeans the day after I had my first. Second, yeah, you know, four weeks later, I was back shredded abs. Third one absolutely rocked me to the point that it's still nearly – what Sunny's three next month and I'm only just getting back into training and movement now. Mm. I also had my breast implants removed. So I had ah. breast implant illness and had my boobies removed. So 
my boobies for me when I got them done wasn't because I wasn't not confident about my breasts. I wanted these big bolt-on cans being, yeah. you know, a magazine model. I was just well, following a Well, you were in Zoo, trend. right? Zoo yeah. pretty. Mate, you but... could put cans of Cokes on them and they'd just sit there like. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the photos. I thought you must have had a boob job. But yeah. I was like, oh, I, I think I asked you and – you never responded, so I was like, maybe she didn't. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, no, um, I yeah. had big, big, massive yeah, boobies, and then had to get wow. them taken out because one ruptured and I got really unwell. So this was how post- was that process? Gosh, let's go there. So the process, I started to get my health really started to decline all of yeah. a sudden, and everything was on my left hand side where my rupture was on my left hand side, and then. I started to investigate and went through an oncoplastic surgeon on the Gold Coast and he said, look, you've actually got a grade four rupture in your left implant. We have to get it out. It's basically liquefied. Oh, my um, God. It came into fruition when I was pregnant with Atticus. I was working at an oncology unit in Wollongong Hospital mm. and I was getting really painful left breast and it was hot and they were like, you can't go and have an MRI. You need to wait until you have the baby to find out what's going on. So I instantly was thinking I've got breast cancer, like something crazy is going on. Had Atticus then went in for investigative and they found that it was just completely like mush. So then left it for a little bit. I kind of ignored the severity of it. And then I started developing like paralysis on my left-hand side of my face. I was getting um, like neuralgia shooting pains all on my left-hand side to the point that it was just, debilitating I was developing really dark rings around my eyes um I was wow. losing the sensation of like my left side of my tongue Jesus got my implants taken out and mm. the surgeon said to me he said look I really want to do a reconstructive on you um mm. and I at this point was very much in you know my still deep in discovery of my body awareness and I said no you know what I don't want to have a reconstructive process I want to see my breasts for what they are Wow. And he was like, oh, That's you're going to be you're gonna be horrified. Mm-hmm. And I just said, no, like I, I, my health is my wealth. I want to see my body as it is. And mm. I remember when I looked at my boobies after I had them out, I was like, mate, they're so good. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. And even Shane said to me, he's like, babe, he's like, it's just like a nice little, little rack. He's like, it's just perfect. <laughs> but – After swelling had settled, they had to remove quite a large chunk of breast tissue. So my left breast is a little bit deformed compared to my right. Mm. But I have fallen in love once again with Mm. my body because of the journey it's been through, the things I've put it through by choice. Yeah. And I love my boobs regardless if I'm missing like, you know, three quarters of a boobie. Yeah, I am. Shane loves them, you know. Yeah. Like it's been such a journey. So, touching on that body confidence, like I truly believe that that's what sus- sustained me in making that decision of not having a reconstruction done, mm. um, because of the work I'd done for many, many years of being so confident in my own vessel. Yeah, yeah, and that all comes down to communication with the self, and that mm. love, like deep adorning, you know, like. Society will make you think that you're always two steps behind or 10 steps ahead and that you're not perfect and that you need to change something or you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Mm. But if you can look at yourself in the mirror daily and you'd be like, oh, like there she is. Like I love her. I love myself. Um, It's just beautiful. It's truly beautiful. And that's also where I have realized when I've come out of alignment, when I used to look at myself in the mirror and I couldn't love her. Yeah. And I was like, where is she gone? Mm. And then it comes back to the body practices, body work. What, know, what do you do? What do you do? What body practices? Because I know women oh. are listening right now and they're like, I want this, I want this. Mm. How the fuck do I get there? Oh, honestly, self-pleasure is – and mm. like I use your wand as well. Great. Now that Good. I have a wand. Um, which one? Onyx, which crystal? Uh, uh, obsidian. Yeah. Obsidian yeah. is just like, oh, Obsidian is just delicious. Um, So that is like my go-to now through self-love practices. But before I had a wand, it was just purely breast massage, masturbation, touch, Mm. 
connection, scalp massage, talking to my body, mm. just those things that really bring you back home. Yeah. Nothing external, no, you know, weird like practice outside that is going to, you know, benefit. It's all in here. Yeah. It's all about touching my own body and just being with the self. Mm. And that is when I when I cannot feel that connection with me, I know that I've stopped doing that. I've stopped reconnecting through self-pleasure, masturbation, touch, mm. just even just like massaging my breasts or touching my hair or, you know, mm. tracing my lips and my face and my body, mm. just really separating from that disassociation, disconnection that we can feel as women and as mothers as well. Yeah. Really bringing that back in. That's what I love about you. Like you always look so glam. Like I really don't fucking get it. Like you've got two little kids, as do I. And I think I remember voice messaging you um, soon after or like mm. maybe a few months after Magnolia was born yeah. and I was like, I do not know who I am. Like I mm. – like my hair feels like shit. My fucking clothes don't fit. <laughs> what the fuck? Like and I don't know what you said. I think – I forget what you said to me. But you always look so glam. Like, how do you like? Is that just something you prioritize? You you obviously yeah. prioritize. You love beautiful clothes. You know, you love yeah. you know investing in nice things, even mm-hmm. if they're from op shops. I know you love going to op shops. What the hell? I like I raided have... the op shop today, and that's what I mean. <laughs> like, even if it's from the op shop, like I still find such incredible, beautiful things that really just light me up. Um, I'm not someone who is just driven by designer stuff. I love mm. nice things, but I also yeah. love like trinkets and natural fibers and just things that make me feel incredible. They're not on trend. I'm not following, mm. you know, something off Pinterest. It's yeah. what my heart and my body is like, yeah, girl, like that's, you know, that's beautiful. Mm. Um, for me, my makeup trend is very basic. I don't have yeah. time to really <laughs> Do a full, you know, makeup thing. I'm very yeah. just like simple. I love a natural makeup. Mm. I don't have time to blow dry my hair. I have kids. Yeah. So I just make sure that I do the things that work for me and with me rather than going against that. Yeah. Um, and I do prioritize self-care. I yeah, you definitely as, do. I love as that. As a woman, it's just so integral to – and whatever that is for you, like that's okay. But mm-hmm. for me, it's about, you know, really good skincare – really yeah. beautiful like bb cream a little mm. bit of lip oil a little bit of mm. rouge and i yeah. always have to have my brows done because that's like having oh a, it's fucking you got out a frame like you, you can't yeah agreed agreed on the brows so yeah like those things really change my mood and you and i've spoken about it before like we always pick our nail yeah. color based on like i am what not it's gonna a good, look like i am not <laughs> i'm not gonna show you mine today because mine are really due for a good old <laughs> Um, color I even thought about chucking color on before this call because I thought fuck my nails aren't done and I'm like got a lira on I really need to step up and then you know I had to feed magnolia (laughs) fucking yeah all the things didn't happen but yeah your nails always look great yeah and it's just you know I don't know you know I'll probably get to a time along my timeline where I'll no longer get my nails done and I probably Mm. won't give as much of a shit I no longer get Botox or anything, you know, mm. working in a medical facility for so long. I was having Botox every fortnight. I no longer mm. get that. I really I don't honoring. believe that because your skin looks so good. Of course, I believe it because I know you're telling me the truth. But honestly, yeah. I don't. I like I, a lot. Yeah, look, I need to get on to that. I've got a couple of friends who are like, what the fuck? I can't believe you don't do it. Yeah. And I used to and then I stopped. So yeah. You know what else yeah. one of my besties got me the other day or like a couple of weeks ago? It's this thing that you put water in and you freeze it and then you – it's oh, the ice. Icing, yeah. And you just ice your face yeah. and it feels so good and your face just goes all red. Have you done it? I have, have been face? watching people and someone right. was saying there was one the other day that they got from Kmart and I was like, that's it, I'm yep. in there. <laughs> yeah, they're at Kmart. Yeah. They're at Kmart. Um, so and you just I, chuck it in. I need to do but that. You just don't let your toddler see it because Sol thinks it's a freaking ice block. And I'm like, mate, put it back. Oh, my gosh. That's for me later when you go to bed. But, yeah, um, anyway, I love hearing about gua sha. I need to get back into mine. I'm a bit lazy with it. Like, I won't lie. Um, I could be better <laughs> at it. But yeah. in saying that, like, you know, the effects of 
like constant uh, gua sha has definitely minimized like my wrinkles. But I also am at that point where like I love my smart lines. Yeah. You know, like, I, I'm loving aging. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel really I'm coming up to 40 next year mm. and I honestly feel like a 40-year-old in a 20-year-old's body. Yeah. Um, I just yeah. feel so at home. Yeah, I love so that. So at home. Yeah. I love that. It's definitely a process, aging. Do you ever Have you ever been through like the, oh, my God, I'm getting older? Because I go through that. I'm like, fuck. I see a photo. Yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, like you're not 25 anymore. Yeah, I you're- do. Um, but then I also like I really appreciate where I'm at and the woman mm. I am now. Like I find that there's beauty in every chapter. Mm. So I may not look like I did 20 years ago, but I still mm. can truly look at myself and be like, oh, my God, like, I love you. Yeah, that's so yeah. cool. That's yeah. so cool. Um, let's talk about, oh, where do I want to take this? Because we could talk forever. Hours. Okay, you, <laughs> yeah, like hours. Um, let's talk about money for a minute. Oof. I know. I mean, it's Oof. like, it's a big one. It's going to tr- probably trigger people, blah, blah, mm. blah. But, you know, why not? What, like, you and I are both driven by money, I, I would say. You can correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. But we, we are both uh, women in business mm. who um, want to earn a lot of money doing what yeah. we love. And we both mentor people in business. Mm-hmm. Um, and we love that. Like, fuck, yeah. seeing other women succeed so and good. just, oh, I, I love it. I love it's it. Lush. Whether I'm getting paid or not, I'm like, let's do this. Let's, yeah. like. So um, what is it about having um, earning, having the potential to earn lots of money that mm. appeals to you? Like, what does that bring to your life? Because, mm. you know, there's so many dirty stories yeah. about money. Like, money doesn't bring happiness. Money doesn't grow on trees. Grow on trees. Rich people are fucked. Rich people are stuck up. You know, like, yeah. all the things, um, all the things we get told as a child and blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. We've- that subconscious story, you know, that mm. – and, and that's also been a really challenging thing for me to navigate is – you know, once again, coming from a really blue collared family, I had mm. family that were in housing commission, you know, mm. hadn't really, you know, been exposed to large amounts of money, um, would live paycheck to paycheck. Like that was a story for a very long time. Mm. But now being in this position where I'm eternally grateful for the money that just flows forward is because it gives access. Yeah. And when I say access, it's not access to, you know, um, this other ultra life, it creates nervous system safety for me. Mm. You know, I mm. was a single parent also. I know what it's like to live paycheck to paycheck. I know what it's like to not have things and make decisions if whether you can have this or have that. Mm. Being able to just have that freedom to be able to pay and do things and not have to worry, yeah. not have to, you know, put that burden on my husband's shoulders. Mm being able to just be abundant and open to whatever is coming is so beautiful for me because that's never really been the story. Yeah. So being in this position now, I'm having to learn how to hold that level of money, being Mm. able to appropriate it in different ways and send it and make more money in different, different channels. Mm. But it's also that safety of Mm. if I want to go and buy expensive dunas i can yeah like but, today you were like, yeah, I like 800 dollar duna because it's really cold here and i need a fucking we and need can, to stay warm at night you know like i yeah. can keep my family ultra warm mm. um but i know that that's not everyone's story and i know that the money topic is really triggering and yeah, it, it used to be really triggering for me yeah. but having the exposure and experience um and the awareness around a regulated nervous system and mm. just having that ability to hold it has been yeah. really potent for us. Mm, I love that. Mm. Yeah, for me it brings freedom. Like if yeah. I, you know, if if we have mm. money in the bank and money in our savings and I know that my business is making money overnight, then we have the freedom to go, well, we feel like a holiday. Yeah. Where should we go? Or let's What do you like, want to do? 
July, August, we're just hitting the road and we're like, let's go on an adventure as a family. And yeah. also the freedom to eat well, which um, yeah. is really a, a health is such a, it's a high value of ours as oh a couple. Gosh. It's like top. And so mm-hmm. for us to be able to go to the health food store and just pile up with yeah. organic produce and all the good things that feed mm-hmm. our kids and keep them healthy and strong, like that's freedom to us. Yeah. And that's why I always hold the intention of you know making good cash basically yeah because <laughs> i'm like always i want that for my children i want that for myself yeah. um and yeah mm. and i'm still working on it too i don't think it's ever something that you never not work on no. i think it's something that you always are learning a different level a new skill mm-hmm. within it you know whether you want to call it a hack or whatever yeah. You're always learning new things. Um, yeah. I used to get really, especially my early relationship with Shane, I used to shut down around money. Mm-hmm. I would never want to talk about it. We would end up in arguments about it. Every time he would try and talk to me, I'd create an argument about it mm-hmm. because I just didn't know what to do with that conversation. Yeah. Um, so I've had to really learn how to hold that and mm. – you know, I'm grateful for that. I'm really, yeah. really grateful for those lessons and opportunities through money. Mm. But also, like, you know, we live on a farm. Farming's not cheap. <laughs> so no. Yeah. I'm going to go make the money, honey, because if I want to have my organic veggie patch and yeah. you know, have my chooks and have my own cattle and, you know, it's expensive. So I need yeah. to go and make that ultra money to live the life that we want to live. Yeah. And... That's what this is for. It's not about, I love op shops, you know, and I love Gucci handbags too, but I haven't been in a handbag <laughs> in a long, long time. Um, you know, I'm now looking at, oh, that's a nice tractor. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like things change around here. So, yeah, it's, um, that's what the money is for us is earning mm. big money and going after big money to be able to create the life for our children and cultivate the dream farm life. Mm. 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 Yeah, I love that. All right, so before we wrap up, Alira, let's talk about BJs because we kind of joked Ooh. that we were going to talk about BJs <laughs> and I had it in my notes with like two question marks, but I think we should just go there just to end the episode with a bang. So, um, BJs, Excuse are the you – Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, do you enjoy – like what, what, what's, what's your – do you enjoy b- giving BJs? Yes. Yes, I do. It's um, but only to my husband. <laughs> well, I'd hope so. That would be a whole other episode. You're like, oh, by the way, we're open. I'm like, fuck's sake, you didn't tell me that. No, you're not. It's I know. um, it's such a beautiful, intimate, just connective moment that mm. you know, I really think for us, it's such a sacred thing yeah. that it's not an all the time. But it is a, my gosh, when it happens, it's fiery and spicy and just beautiful, but very intimate, very like cheeky. Um, I feel like it's more intimate than um, penetrative sex. And that's a big call. It is, you know, and it's, there's just, you can do so much with it really, Mm. but for us over time, it's really evolved that it's just this deep reconnection. Um, mm. And for me, it's just such an active service of love. Yeah. You know, yeah. to just hold my husband in a way mm. that it's just, it's really fucking beautiful to me. Yeah. 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 I Oral feel like it's just like, woof, woof. Yeah, it's really intimate. You nailed it. And, you know, I feel like when Nick and I are deeply, deeply connected, that's Ooh. when I'm giving more more BJs, to be honest. More pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, there's like there's more of me when I feel like when he's being really present and when mm. he is um, listening and he's patient and he's mm-hmm. giving me words of affirmation, my love language, all the things, yeah. that's when I'm more inclined to suck his dick. Basically. Well, it's very dangerous to put a dick in a woman's mouth when she's angry. <laughs> like, it's not. Yeah, it's, well, don't even bother with me because it ain't happening. And if, if like, I'm angry. that is just an, a, like, you're in the red zone. 
Like, yeah, you know, yeah. this is dangerous. Don't, yeah. don't do it. Don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you've got some weird kink, of course, <laughs> then go for it. But, but no, yeah. for us, it's just beautiful. It's connective. Mm. Um, is that something that you do, like, it, does it always lead into penetrative sex or is it no. just like, here's a, yeah, cool. No, That's very nice. rarely. It, uh, we don't mm. follow that, you know, first base, second base, like there's yeah. no like playbook, but very mm. rarely it is mm. more of a like, hey, babe, like this is for you mm. and only you. Yeah. Like just kick back. Yeah. That's so you know? beautiful. I love that. I love when I hear people are just giving like allowing their partner to receive without expecting mm-hmm. anything in return. And I think that's yeah. a, such a beautiful thing because what people can fall into and mm. they do is, well, I did this for you and now you need to do what something you do for, for me. me. And often when I am giving like that, I don't need anything in return. I'm receiving no. just oh. by giving. I don't need him, Nick to go down on me afterwards. I'm so full because I'm like, I just gave, mm-hmm. gave, you so much pleasure that mm-hmm. I feel like my cup is full. I yeah. go to sleep happy, like I'm yeah. happy. It's like nine need, times yeah. out of ten, though. Like I'm pretty mm. borderline orgasming, also. Yeah, yeah. You because know, it's, so it's this connectiveness of just oh my gosh, mm. it's wild. And yeah. as time goes on, it just gets better. Yeah, it gets better. Yeah, yeah that's go, so good I to hear. Mm. Mm. Well, we'll just wrap it up right there. It's so Thank good. you. <laughs> so Thanks good. so much. So all this Thank- talk, I'm, I'm eating up in here. Yeah, she's about, yeah. <laughs> Watch out, Shane. Here she comes. Pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for you know sharing a little snippet of your marriage. I know it's big for anyone to share publicly mm. about the challenges and the yeah intimacy and you know blowjobs all the things and the com- body confidence stuff and i love that you slipped in that you had a um uh what do we call it when you take the breast implants an explant yeah explant capsule i love that you're just like yeah and then i just took the breast out i'm like oh that's big how did i not know that that's like yeah so awesome that you shared that it's a big and bit it's huge yeah and i think you know what i was going to say when we were chatting about it was that i feel like it's becoming more common for women Mm. to choose that for themselves yeah it is yeah Um, and yeah I I like I like that there's that option for women yeah yeah it's definitely um it's becoming more frequent the removal Mm -hmm. I think when I was getting it done it was not even it wasn't a big thing um Mm. I think I was probably the second person in Queensland he was from memory he was saying that had requested that um but now we're just learning so much about it. And I'll never shame a woman for wanting to go and get breast implants. But, my gosh, I just wish there was more, you know, awareness around how complex and complicated can actually go mm-hmm. and be, you know, not only the surgery but the impacts of the post. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, oh. it's a big one. It is. Yeah. Well, thank Thanks, you for babe. sharing. Um, where can people find you on Instagram if they want to? Ooh, go check yeah, out you all your find me at alira a w l i r a c o h r s awesome and you also i'm going to give it a plug you also started this is so random when you told me this i was like oh gosh she's such an entrepreneur <laughs> you started the vault which is like a tell quickly tell us yeah so the, cool. vault, <laughs> the vault stock is like my little content creation baby with a very good girlfriend of mine kate and it has stock imagery. There's all faceless um, videos. There is cinematography, ebooks, templates, everything. If you are uh, someone that is involved in the influencing space or content creation space, you're someone that is a, a brand online, whether you want to rebrand, start your brand, just everything to do with brands, you can go into the vault and mm. you can get a membership and literally just have access to some of the most incredible imagery I have ever seen in my life. And, yeah, it's just our baby. It's just growing and it's going absolutely gangbusters. Yeah, I love that. And this, by the way, if you're listening, this is not sponsored. Like I, you have not paid me no. <laughs> to be like, hey, so let's just plug. This is just because I think it's so awesome to see women doing great things. And, um, mm. yeah, so if you need really great stock imagery, 
and you're yeah. in the digital space so yeah go go check it out okay well thank you and um hopefully we can have you back thanks love love you thank you love you too Thank you for listening to this episode of the Authentic Sex Podcast. If you love the show, please hit follow wherever you are listening and leave me a review. And if you really, really, really loved it, please share the podcast with your friends, family and social media followers. Doing this together as a community, we can make an impact and support the world to feel more sexually empowered and free and just get the word out about these free resources. If you'd like to join me for daily updates and inspiration, you can find me on Instagram, which is at Juliet, J-U-L-I-E-T underscore Allen, A-L-L-E-N. And you can also head on over to my website to join any of my offerings, Pleasure School, the Intimacy Blueprint, uh, and you can also treat yourself to the Juliet Pleasure Wand at www.juliet, J-U-L-I-E-T, hyphen allen a double l e n dot com <laughs>